Hey everyone, welcome back to FSI DFS. Finally, we get a massive 10 game slate on the docket. I guess it's not too massive, uh, but we have been dealing with a bunch of four, five, and six game slates the first couple days of the season. So it seems massive, uh, 20 teams in action. Uh, but before we dive in of our favorite pitchers and favorite team stacks uh, and some individual plays as well, I'm McKinley412. Uh, I'm one of the FSI MLB coaches here. Uh, if you don't know about FSI, we are a daily fantasy site and we provide cores uh, throughout a multitude of sports. Uh, we kind of give out these core sheets out uh, in our Discord. We also post them on the website. Uh, come join us. We got a daily package, weekly, monthly, yearly subscription, whatever you would like, uh, whatever you are comfortable with. But this is kind of an example of what they look like uh, in the MLB room, at least. Uh, we provide cash cores on DraftKings and on FanDuel, GPP cores. Uh, we'll, we obviously can't give out a full lineup, uh, but we'll leave a couple blanks in there, you know, maybe three, four, sometimes five uh, blanks just to kind of guide you guys at least in the right direction. Uh, we'll talk about our favorite pitchers in the high uh, salary, mid salary, cheap, who are guys we want to fade, uh, all the showdowns, tiers, favorite stacks, GPP stacks, et cetera. Uh, so if you haven't already uh, checked us out, please come join us. We'd love to have you. Uh, it is like a family in there. So I really appreciate all the time uh, that I get to spend talking with the guys that are uh, in the chat already. I have a blast. I really, I really love it. Uh, so let's get back to this slate, a 10 game slate. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through uh, some of the pitchers. Obviously, I'm not going to go through all 20 pitchers. We will be here for a long time. Um, but I'll go through, I think I got like eight or 10 that I kind of want to talk about in my mind. And then I'll give you some of my favorite stacks, uh, as far as cash plays, GPP plays, um, and then maybe some individual plays as I'm going throughout. So let's just get started right up at the top, Freddie Peralta, uh, Milwaukee at Chicago. One thing real quick, weather wise, not much to pay attention to. There's a slight wind blowing in at Wrigley. Uh, but the Kansas City game has like a 20 mile per hour wind blowing out. Obviously, things can change. Uh, I'm recording these the night before. So please, you know, please check out the weather uh, before you finalize all your lines. But Freddie Peralta, uh, he is just so good. So good. 10,200. Middle of the season, he's going to be this price. I'm not going to think too much of it. Right now, early on in the season, um, we're seeing a lot of the starting pitchers only going like 75 to 90 pitches, maybe. Uh, they're not getting their full workload in. So 10.2K is a little scary. Brandon Woodruff, uh, we faded him at FSI uh, on, what day is it, Saturday? And it worked out. I mean, Woodruff was 76% owned, but, you know, he really struggled. Uh, I mean, he had his spring struggles, and I just think he was too expensive. Um, and that's kind of where I'm leaning here with Peralta. Obviously, you know, with his talent, with his strikeout upside, he can hit value. Um, but with maybe getting shortened, like one or two innings of pitching, that salary, it's going to be kind of tough, especially with the bats that I really want to be targeting. There's some really, really good uh, matchups. Uh, I'm going to want to be paying up for bats. And I think 10.2K is just a little bit too much for me for a guy not getting his full leash. Marcus Stroman, he's on the other side of this game. Uh, Stroman, he's not like Peralta. He's not going to be, you know, mowing you down strikeout after strikeout. Uh, he's not going to really be lighting up the DFS scoreboard, uh, but he's a reliable pitcher. I don't think he's a 9.9K pitcher, especially on his first start early on in the season. Uh, I'm probably not going to be going there uh, in my cash games. GPP, obviously, you know, everything's fair game. Ian Anderson, he had a really ugly spring training. Uh, I think his ERA was over seven. Uh, he just had a really rough time. Uh, but we've seen, you know, from last year and the year before that, you know, he is a proven starting pitcher in this league. He's got solid numbers. You can kind of see his numbers. These are from last season. But he's kind of cemented himself as a true starting pitcher in this league. Um, but again, he had a really rough, rough spring training. Peralta also, I forgot to mention, Peralta had a rough spring training as well. Uh, so maybe, you know, that causes you a little bit more concern about playing him uh, against Chicago. But Ian Anderson, rough, rough spring if you do want to go up that high. Ryu, going up against Texas, uh, 9.2K. 
now we're kind of getting into the range where I'm willing to pay up uh, this salary for guys. Ryu, though, he only pitched three innings in spring training. So we got a serious concern about his leash and how long he's going to be allowed to pitch. Um, and, you know, all things I'll put aside, he's kind of like a boomer bust pitcher. He, last season, he was that boomer bust guy where he would break a slate and just do amazing. And then there were games where he would get you four DraftKings points and you were like, why did I pay so much money for this guy? So he's really kind of that boomer bust. Screwball, uh, going up against the White Sox. Lefties against the White Sox. I don't like to touch them. Uh, the White Sox were a top-tier team against left-handed pitching with their all-righty lineup. Uh, and tomorrow, well, Sunday, they get Tim Anderson back from suspension, uh, batting at the top of the order there. So that lineup's even going to be more deadly. Uh, so I do kind of like the Chicago White Sox as a GPP angle. Uh, but I also like Scooball as a GPP pitcher as well. Uh, he was light out in spring training, 13.2 innings pitch, only two earned runs. And in those 13 innings, 21 strikeouts. So he was phenomenal, put up one of the best spring training performances of pitchers. But now he's got a very, very difficult test uh, against the Chicago White Sox. Scrolling on down, uh, Marco Gonzalez going up against Pittsburgh. Gonzalez pitched 17 innings. The reason I'm only going to bring him up is because he had one of the highest workloads in spring training among the starting pitchers on this slate here. So he's really, uh, he's a guy that could go deep into this game, you know, if he does well. And at 7.9K, that's fine. Zach Eflin going up against Oakland. Uh, Oakland is just, you know, not a great team this season. Uh, and speaking of great spring trainings, Eflin, he had one. Uh, nine innings pitched, only four hits against in those nine innings, and 11 strikeouts. Uh, obviously, that is way above the Eflin that we kind of remember. Uh, but who knows? Maybe he's figured something out. Maybe he's, you know, changed his pitch, uh, the angle and everything, and he's figured something out. Who knows? But he is in great form right now. Doesn't seem to be any rust at all with the extra a lockout um, extended off season. So Eflin at 7.7 K going up against the bad team, kind of in that form. I don't mind him at all. Steven Matz, uh, he just continues to change teams. He went from the Mets to Toronto and now he's with St. Louis. So he's got some decent stuff, you know, solid numbers. When I saw him at 7.1 K, I was like, that's a pretty decent price for Steven Matz. And then, you know, I was reminded that he's going up against Pittsburgh and, you know, I like that even better. Mikolas, disappointment on Saturday. I'll fully admit it. We got it right with the Woodruff fade, uh, but the Mikolas play just did not work out. Um, but still, Matt's St. Louis. I'm going to pick, continue to pick on Pittsburgh uh, with average uh, to great pitching pretty much all season long. 7.1K, not bad. Uh, going on down. Hmm. Great spring. Uh, Eric Fed, Fede here, however you pronounce it. I honestly don't know. Uh, but he had an amazing spring training, 9.1 innings pitch, zero earned runs, eight strikeouts. Uh, obviously, that is not who he truly is. He had an ERA over five last season, and he's in a tough matchup going up against the Mets. Am I going to play him tomorrow? Probably not. Do people... I uh, want to kind of see the form that he is in and go for like a GPP dart, 150 lines. Sure. You know, plug him in there, uh, but I will not be going there. I don't build 150 lines, um, but just wanted to bring up his spring just because it was so dominant. And the last guy uh, is going to be Kopech for the Chicago White Sox. 5.6K. This guy is a strikeout machine. Uh, he was a relief pitcher. He got a couple of starts last season and he was going like three to five innings. So I'm fully expecting him to go that like three, probably four or five innings tomorrow, today, Sunday, whenever you're watching this video on Sunday. And you can kind of see how many strikeouts he had. The numbers I got written down was he had 108 strikeouts in 69 innings. That is unreal, uh, his strikeout rate. So if he's going to get me three, four or five innings at this price tag with that strikeout upside, I have a lot of interest in Kovac here uh, for Chicago. So those are kind of the 10 pitchers uh, that I really wanted to focus on. Obviously, there's other guys in there that could be fine plays. You know, Quantrill, he's a former top 10 pick. 
you know, he, he's fine. He's going up against Kansas city, not the greatest team. Um, Carrasco, he's a big boomer bus guy. Yeah, I guess really, there's not really too many other guys that I do want to talk about. Uh, but that's pretty much my views on the pitcher. So let's get, dive to the bats here. We'll start with Philadelphia, just because I see them on the left here. Philadelphia uh, going up against Jeffries. Jeffries is just real bad. Um, let's see the numbers that I had on him here. 14 innings pitched in spring training, 24 hits against, 15 earned runs. Uh, right-handed batters hit 446 off of him. Uh, left-handed batters hit 390. Um, so rough, rough numbers. Could be 340. I was scribbling. Uh, but regardless, real rough numbers. So I do have a lot of interest in Philadelphia, uh, especially their lefties, you know, Harper, Schwarber, and Gregorius. Harper, rough start. I mean, only it was only two games. I can't really even say it was a rough start. Uh, but 6.1K. That is pretty, pretty pricey. Schorber, uh, 5'4", don't mind him. And Gregorius at 3'8", uh, don't mind him at all. I think he's going to be competing with, do you want to go him or do you kind of want to go with Bo Bichette uh, for Toronto, who we're going to be talking about here soon. Um, or, I mean, Tim Anderson. There's going to be a lot of uh, shortstops that we have interest in here on Sunday. Castellanos, Hoskins. I mean, Hoskins just had a fantastic game. Uh, so, I don't know. I like Philadelphia as a team. Uh, it's just going to be kind of tough to figure out which guys you really want. Going on over, we will go to, with Toronto next. It says Perez is pitching. Again, I don't think that's right. Uh, I was right on Saturday when DraftKings said that Manning was pitching for Detroit, and I said it was Mize, and it was Mize. So I think this is happening again here. I think Toronto is going up against Howard uh, for Texas. Howard is one and seven in his career in the majors, an ERA close to seven, a whip of 1.62, uh, and he's got reverse splits. Howard is a right-handed pitcher, but he's got reverse splits. So right-handed bats hit him the best. Uh, and what is Toronto? They're all right-handed bats. Uh, so I'm definitely looking at Vlad Guerrero, definitely looking at Bo uh, And then, you know, Gurriel at 3.8, I think that's great value uh, for a guy hitting in the middle of the order. Um, for this high powered offense, uh, just 3.8 K totally fine. I like it. Uh, those kind of be the three guys. If you don't want to pay up for one of these bigger names, I mean, obviously Springer Hernandez, you can't really go too wrong. Uh, Kirk, uh, he's been batting the DH 3.1 K Jansen catching three, three fine. Totally fine. Uh, I think Toronto's going to absolutely be smashing here on Sunday. Next up, we will go to St. Louis. St. Louis is going up against uh, Bryce Wilson. Wilson, career 5.55 ERA, and it was worse in the spring training. Spring training, he had an ERA close to seven, uh, and he is also reverse splits. Uh, so he's a right-handed pitcher, right-handed batters, hit him the hardest. Uh, and what is St. Louis? A lot of right-handed bats. Uh, so we're looking at Goldschmidt for sure. Uh, obviously, you got Guerrero that he's going to be competing with at first base. Arenado has been amazing to start off the season here. Um, Tyler O'Neill. O'Neill and Goldschmidt, those are the two best uh, guys against right-handed pitching on this St. Louis team from last season's numbers. Uh, if you want to take those into consideration, uh, Goldschmidt and O'Neill. DeYoung has awful numbers against right-handed pitching. So I kind of would stay clear away from him. I know the price is a little nice at just 4.1K. It gives you a little bit of a, a relief, but his numbers, and then adding in the fact that you got guys like Bo Bichette uh, and Gregorius and Tim Anderson uh, at the shortstop position, I'm probably not going to be going with Guriel. It says Anderson's out. His suspension's over. I'm recording these on Saturday. Uh, he'll be playing on Sunday. So that kind of turns to Chicago White Sox. It's kind of turned towards them. Um, really like Chicago as a GPP team. Uh, Scooball, obviously great pitcher, great numbers. Uh, and Chicago is a great team against left-handed pitching. So it's going to be kind of like the two fists going at it, you know, who's going to win. 
Uh, so Scooball, he's got even splits. Uh, so lefties, righties doesn't really matter too much. But like I said, Chicago White Sox, they're one of the best teams against left-handed pitching. The one guy who is just unreal against left-handed pitching last season was Luis Robert. He hit 397 in 68 at-bats. He hit 397 against them. So at 5.7K, while it seems like a lot, I don't mind paying that much for him. Um, obviously, you're not going to be getting all these bats in. I'm just kind of listing guys off as I go. Um, adding in pitchers is going to be impossible. Uh, but Robert, definitely a guy that I wanted to target out there. Tim Anderson, 5'5", uh, five, five, don't mind him at all. He had the second best numbers. He was hitting 319. And then Jose Abreu was next on the list, hitting close to 300. Uh, so you can kind of see a trend here. There's a lot of great first basemen that I want to be paying up for. There's a lot of great shortstops that I want to be paying up for. Um, but yeah, Arenado, Robert, uh, I think those are like the two top dollar guys that are like kind of you can fit in. They kind of stand out from the rest uh, at their position. And final team I will talk about. I know I'm kind of getting a little long here. It's going to be Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta. Whoop, let me go to the hitters, not the pitchers. Uh, Atlanta facing off against Hunter Green. Green's been injured for a couple seasons here, um, but Green is, you know, he's like Chapman. He can throw the ball like crazy. He hit 103 miles per hour on the gun uh, during spring training, and he is routinely over 100 miles per hour on his pitches, 101, 102, 103 miles an hour. Um, he strikes a lot of guys out. He's got great strikeout rate. However, if he's not striking them out, he is getting hit hard. Uh, he allowed four home runs in his three innings uh, during spring training. Uh, in Atlanta, they do strike out quite a bit. I was looking at the numbers from last season. I think they ranked like ninth or tenth with like most strikeouts or their highest strikeout percentage in the league against right-handed pitching. Uh, so it was a little bit concerning. Uh, but still, really the guys that were uh, standing out uh, were Austin Riley at 4.5K, which I completely forgot about when I made that Arenado comment. I like Riley. Uh, at 4.5K, um, who else do I got down here? And then really the lefties. Uh, we're looking at Rosario at uh, 4.1K, obviously Olsen, 5.3. And if you want a cheap, cheap lefty, Dickerson at 2.5K, but he's going to be batting like eighth in the order. He's going to be way down. Um, so I do like Atlanta also from like a GPP play. So like my three biggest guys I want to be targeting are going to be Philadelphia, Toronto, and St. Louis. And then the GPP would be like Chicago White Sox and Atlanta. Obviously, there are so many other teams uh, that I could be talking about, but I don't want to make this an hour long video. You guys probably don't want to listen to me for an hour. Uh, so we'll just kind of wrap it up there. But let's just see what happens here. Um, I'm going to take Arenado out. I'm going to put in uh, Austin Riley at third base. And we'll throw in a pitcher. Uh, who is a pitcher that I was liking? Um, I mean, Eflin, you said he had a great spring. Uh, you're looking at 4.4K remaining. Maybe you go up to one of these 9K pitchers, uh, 3.2. Look, that's a little tight, uh, but I mean, that's still with Guerrero, Riley, and Robert all in there. Um, obviously, you can put in a cheap catcher, and then boom, you're off to the races. So, like, even with that, you could fit in a guy like uh, Freddy Peralta and still have, like I said, a cheap pitcher, and you could easily find your way um, to a lineup with this. But Again, this is not an official core. These are not the guys that I'm going to be coring on Sunday afternoon for sure. Um, this is just kind of guys I'm plugging in as I'm talking, as I'm going through this video. So that kind of wraps things up. Obviously, there are so many other great plays. Uh, who do you guys like? Drop it down in the comment below. Hit that like button. Subscribe. Uh, we got videos pumping out here at FSI all the time. Uh, so get that notification when we do uh, release those new videos. As always, Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, good luck in your contests, and I will see you in the next video.